L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. In 2015, the Paris Agreement was signed as part of a global effort to reduce climate change. Part of the agreement was to limit carbon emissions from energy plants powered by fossil fuels. This was just one factor in increasing interest in renewable energy from sources such as sunlight, wind, tides and geothermal. But renewable energy has one major downside. Once it's been generated, it needs to be used immediately, otherwise it just gets lost. You could try and store that surplus energy, but it requires highly efficient battery power, which has been keeping scientists challenged for years. But now there's a radically different and environmentally friendly way of capturing and storing that surplus renewable energy, and it all comes out of thin air. Javier Cavada is chief executive of High View Power, which is developing an energy system designed to solve the problem of storing surplus renewable energy, meaning energy grids in the future could be powered entirely by renewables. In a highly renewable grid, more than 50% of the times, the renewable power that is generated is not being utilized because the demand and the generation is not happening at the same time. Yeah. So 50% is wasted? More than 50%, that's what is being declared. And it's that unused 50% that Highview Power are hoping to store, so that it's not lost. You can see such a sunny day, so windy, all the power that you can generate and, well, after four o'clock, everybody's turning on the yeah. gas. So essentially, it's bringing stability to a very unstable source of energy. Yeah, exactly, and, and he knows it, and so that the, <laughs> there is so much power available from the mother nature, I and mean, so much wind, so much solar, and then when the lights are off at, after four o'clock until nine or ten, so five or six hours, many millions of people turning off the radiators, turning the heaters, burning stuff, while during the day we have been wasting and wasting. That's what we fix with our technology. We store it all and we have it all for, and not for 10,000 people, for millions. A normal high view power system is going to provide power to 50,000 people, to 100,000 people, depending on the size, for as many hours as we need. I've come to Birmingham University to visit the Birmingham Centre for Energy Storage and it's where really the idea for this technology is being developed. Professor Yu Longding is the inventor of the liquid air energy storage technology or cryo battery and led the initial stage of technology development with high view power. They've built a small pilot plant located on the Birmingham University campus that's capable of powering hundreds of homes. And it's all based on storing energy by cooling air to extremely low temperatures. What are the key components of your technology? The liquid air storage uh, technology uses excessive um, energy, which is the natural state mainly, to compress and liquefy air and to give liquid air. And liquid air is something like water, but at minus 196 degrees C, you can store that at almost ambient pressure. So an energy density is quite high. So you only need a small space to store that liquid air. When you need energy, what you do, you pump it up to a higher pressure, and you use environmental heat to heat it up, to vaporize liquid air, and which expand about 700 times to drive a turbine producing electricity back to the grid. That's how it works. Surplus renewable energy is used to compress air. It's then also used to cool that air. In this case, to minus 196 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, air becomes a liquid, which can then be stored in the equivalent of giant thermos flasks. When environmental heat from normal air is added, the liquid air heats up and expands, returning to its gaseous state. It's this rapid expansion from liquid to gas that creates the pressure to drive electricity generating turbines. So before you go, we have to give you the net code first and uh, uh -huh. with the goggles, which is, uh, I think the goggles is in the pocket. Yet another lab, yet oh. another lab coat. <laughs> 
Okay, this is the, the whole lab scale system to demonstrate how liquid air is expanded, drive a turbine and produce electricity. Okay, so, so you've got your liquid nitrogen there. Yeah, to simulate liquid air. Okay. And uh, pumped up using the pressure itself. Being heated up, we use water to simulate the ambient heat. And uh, then this will drive a turbine. So the magic is in seeing this turbine spin. Yes and that will drive a generator producing electricity. And you will see the numbers, digits come up, which means electricity being produced. Okay, so we want these numbers to change here. Right now it's zero. Yes, so okay. you want to see now? Yeah, so let's do it. What I need to, I need to sort of wear some gadgets because uh, it's quite cold and uh, can easily uh, freeze stuff. So what I do, I'll turn this gradually and you will see And you can see the digits changes. So the yeah. So you can see that that's producing electricity. So we're going up to almost ten. Yeah. So and that depends on spinning speed. So that's now gaseous air yeah. driving that turbine. Yes. So and you can see the cooling effect as well. Wow! Look at that. Highview Power has built a plant in Manchester that shows that this is possible on a larger scale. So, this is the functioning plant. It is, yeah. It's our Pillsworth site, just out of north of Manchester. So it's just like any other uh, battery you get, where you get a you get a charge, a store, and a dis discharge part of the process. So if you look behind you there, that's effectively where we're storing active power in the form of liquid air. Each tank's about 100,000 litres. So you've got extreme cold. Yep. And extreme heat in those. Correct. Coming together in the heat exchanger, which is right. up there. Okay. So they come together, massively expand, send it into the turbo expander. Yeah. So it goes into the turbo expander, it expands. It, yeah. When it's an expansion, it cools again. So the gas then comes out again into another heat exchanger. We put more heat in. So we do that four times through the four stages of the turbo expander. So the turbo expander is then coupled to a generator, but then they'll convert that that energy into electrical energy, which we then export onto the grid. Essentially, they're reusing heat and cold, produced during the process and by the neighbouring landfill site, to boost the efficiency of the expansion process. A plant of this size, what would it typically power in terms of number of homes? So this is a small plant and is not the commercial scale plant we're looking to build. Uh, this plant is five megawatts, which is about five homes, that if we therefore built a 100 megawatt plant, which is what we intend to do, then it would generate power for a mid-sized town, such as Berry nearby. And the technology that exists here, how easy is it to scale that up? So these big tanks where the liquid air is stored, basically that's a big thermos flask, so it's a very low cost way of keeping liquid cool. And because the, the thermos flask is a relatively cheap part of our plant, that means if you simply want more storage, say five hours, eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, then you're simply building the, the cheapest piece of the plant. And how are you hoping to physically do that in the UK? So we're hoping to build on a commercial scale our first project in the UK towards the end of this year, and our first project in the US probably three to four months later, so early next year. And as I say, these will be at the kind of 50 megawatt scale, so 10 times this scale. Um, and once we build our first, we believe that's going to attract a lot of global interest because we do think it is a global application. Um, and that will really spur um, the development of further, further projects. using the cheapest fuel around, which is what we breathe, and we're converting it into something which I think is going to be very useful, namely translating the benefits of renewable energy 24-7 right across the day.